I'm going to the, where I'm estimating to be the, the third tarsal there, 28. 28. We got the weight, and I think that's it. Um, I don't want to weigh the testes. Sweet, so should we push it over that way? And then, or let's see how much he lays out if we flip him up. Also, see, these are his leg is so broken. Oh, it's just flopping God. around all over the place. Is this one broken too? I think it is, yeah, I think it it's too. femur it's split. That's not like that one. He's just, ugh, poor puppy. Obviously, this is not something you want to do at home on your kitchen table. For one thing, wolves can be protected species. You need a permit to be in possession of them. Wolves can carry roundworm and ringworm, which can be transmittable to humans. So long as we don't attempt to ingest any feces from this wolf, we should be fine. Okay. We're gonna make the first incision. I'm looking for the back of his mandible, you know, the back of your jaw where it comes together so I can cut between it. So right now I'm trying to get through all this under fur and find out where the skin actually starts. It's very thick. So the first series of cuts are kind of like, you're testing to see how thick the skin is, but I don't want to cut so much that I cut through all the way and reach muscle tissue. Once you cut through muscle tissue, you start to get bleeding. And I don't need blood this early in the morning. Whoa, hey, hey. Where'd this guy come from? I know, that's what Fleas, are those fleas? Sick. This guy had been in a freezer for two weeks and he still has live fleas living on him. So there's the first cut. So now I'm just kind of like, I made this little hole. I'm just trying to separate the hole and like see how far the epidermal layer goes and at what point I'm going to hit fat and muscle. That's kind of where I want to be. See the muscle layer right there? And this is the epidermal layer. This is kind of frozen congealed blood in here. See it moving around in the veins. So, because I have that vein attached to the skin, I'm cutting through the layers of fat so I don't puncture it. This right here is fat. That is wolf fat right there. So his throat is right here, and this is his, you know, breast muscle starting to come forward where his arm has been broken at the humerus. Someone's texting me, and I don't think I will be able to get back to them. This is just the base of the subcutaneous tissue. This is the connective tissue that connects the skin to the muscle and it has this like glossiness to it. There's fat attached to the skin here. So I cut a little close there. And this is ideally what I would be doing all of the time. So you can see the top of the scapula here. This is probably where it should normally be. This is the top of the scapula on the other side. So if we draw a straight line across, it's been, you know, that's about four inches right there where it's been dislocated. So this is cool. I cut accidentally between two different muscles right here. So the same kind of like weird transparent connective tissue, this stuff right here that attaches, I think it's the same tissue. It's a very similar connective tissue that attaches the skin to the muscle, also attaches the muscles to one another. It's surprisingly strong and it's very flexible. And uh, this is what holds your insides together. So this is where I'm starting to see signs of trauma or potential trauma from where you got hit by the car. Cause you can see all of these burst blood vessels in here. Um, whereas like, you know, this part of the skin is pretty pink and consistent all the way through. You start looking in here and you're seeing these like bright red veins. Also this dark coloration kind of looks like a bruise, what a bruise looks like underneath the skin, which would make sense. I mean, cause this is, you know, where he got the brunt of the impact, I'm thinking, from the car. Can you see all of that trauma in there? All that dark, dark red, it's almost purple or black colored. So it's a huge bruise underneath the skin. That's obviously where he sustained the huge impact. Don't get hit by a car, you guys. Look at this, do you see this? all this blood in that vein right there? I don't wanna pop that, it's gonna be gross if I do. But you can see like another indication of trauma. Of all of the blood is pooled under there. It's like a big zit you just want to pop. This is the where the semi-lunar notch is of the, of the ulna. So this is backwards, where it's supposed to be pointing that way. It's twisted because the humerus is broken under here, I think. That's what I'm deducing right now. You guys, I'm really sorry. We just identified the wolf. I think it's Jacob. I think it's Bella's Jacob from Twilight. I'm really sorry. We'll go back through later and cut along the inside of the limbs. I just kind of want to fillet him open first. 
That made me think of McDonald's. I'm kind of hungry. So this right here, I mean, all of this, this looks like healthy, good tissue and everything. And we're getting down here and all of a sudden it's green. So I'm wondering if when it was hit by a car, the bowels ruptured. And so we're having some like seepage. So I'm gonna be really careful about how I work around here. The last thing that I wanna do is puncture that and release whatever kind of gases or bacteria have turned this green. It's not a good sign that it keeps smelling worse the further we go down here. Um, I don't like the idea that the bowels are all bloated and distended. We just had that conversation about how roundworm and ringworm and all of these other kinds of diseases and parasites can live in the bowels. So I don't want to puncture them and release yeah, any of that. Sure. It is not a healthy color. It's not a happy color. It's not a good smell coming off of it. And it's not just gases being released out of the anus because you can smell them from over there. So the tissue itself has this odor to it, which makes me think that there's bacteria, which is active and alive. I'm getting to the penis right now. I can feel the baculum right here. All dogs have a baculum, which is literally the penis bone of an animal. Humans don't have it anymore. Some primates do, but it is very small. So I'm gonna cut to one side of the baculum as I go down this way. Sometimes in the collection, we'll also come across broken baculum. They are bones. They can break and fracture and splinter just like any other bone in your body. Think about that one, guys. I never know quite how to move around the baculum. I mean that in all seriousness, you guys. Cause like, do you remove it like how you do the, the other limbs? I mean, cause it's got, it's like that tube shape. So you have the baculum, you have the penis and you have the skin around it. Do you fillet it on the inside of the baculum and open it like I, that? Oh God, that reeks. Ugh. Let's try to describe that smell. What does it smell like? It smells like KFC if you leave it in the back of your car. <laughs> with a layer of water at the bottom of the bucket in 100 degree weather for eight years. I am continuously amazed by the things that nature produces. And, and you know, the fact that some of these animals can sustain such significant injuries during their life, mm -hmm. and the, they don't go inside at night. They don't have health care. Yeah. They don't have a doctor. <laughs> like, I seriously, I feel like such a wimp. I'll stub my toe or something, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm done. Today <laughs> is over. The the I'm out. That's a wrap for the day. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> And uh, you'll see these animals and they'll have huge compound fractures and giant radial like twists and turns and all the bone is regrown together and they lose like half of the limb, the forelimb, and, and especially like on an ungulate like a deer or an elk, yeah. they're having to walk on those things continuously for years. It takes them years to regrow that and to use that limb again. So in that time, they're still hunting, they're still foraging. They're probably not in a good place to be reproducing, but they are evading predators. Mm -hmm. And I just, I mean, that kind of thing is just so impressive to me. It like motivates me to be a better human being. I'm not even kidding. Like if <laughs> these just, animals can do it. I better step up my game. I better just suck it up. This is unhealthy. <laughs> this buoyancy is not what you want. You want things to like deflate once they die. You don't want them to inflate. Cause that, yeah, that just implies all kinds of gases. Wow, oh. Look at that, I just punctured the, the vein there. Oh yeah. We got a bleeder. This is um, the femur right here, which has been broken. We have the patella, which is the knee bone. This is the top of the tibia. And then behind it is the joint bone, the fibula. You can see all the tendons running along the bottom of the foot and they all connect back here. You can kind of see the system there where he's relaxed. Then it pulls tight. You can pull on it like that. And I can feel his foot like here, his toes are relaxed and this pad is down against my palm. And when I do this, I can feel these other fingers, like his, his, what essentially are his finger bones, like flexing into my hand. So it's like taut and relaxed and taut and relaxed. Pretty cool, guys. High five. I just put my face right in his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Something still smells bad to me. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here we go. There we go. If I was writing a Disney movie, this is when the female character would break into a song. I don't think Disney would make a movie about... The young, beautiful taxidermist. <laughs> like, when I grow up, like I just want to be a taxidermist. It's like a princess who doesn't want to be a princess. She wants to be a taxidermist. Oh, Whoa. Bam. There we go, everybody. That's what the paw looks like. Sans leg bones. And it's a little bit floppy. This is what goes inside of there. And these still have like the claws are attached to another third. 
phalanx phalanges and uh, then they attach with this this is the paw this is where the pad is right there so you can kind of see it as it would move around yeah compared to that leg you can see where the femur is like sticking out here it's broken it's been broken right there so it's just interesting to kind of you know, play with it and see like how the muscles flex in here and how they move and rotate and work together. If you could get macro shots of this, it's like a gorgeous biological landscape. I'm serious. Okay, I'm gonna be cutting at you. Here I come, my blade. Don't get your finger in the way. You're gonna make a joke about how I'm gonna cut you and it's not gonna be funny because I'm gonna freak out. Ow. Hey, I hate that. <laughs> ah, you're such a jerk. I mean, you flip this and it's just like taut and this is like squishy. It smells every time you do that. What do you, what would you, well, how you would you? Stop doing it. it. I can't. <laughs> we have the baculum in here and the baculum is the penis bone. We have the penis. You can see a little bit of like blood and urine which has come out of the tip of the penis right here. It's still in the fur. So now we're gonna remove the penis. First I have to find it and I can feel the baculum in there. You can kind of see it. Do you want to touch it? Are you sure? Okay. How should we remove this curator? Oh, that's new to me. You don't remove penis bones Not very too often. often. I mean, sometimes on Friday nights. But... Sick. Should I just cut through this right here? Yeah, I think so. Oh, there we go. So this is like the the sheath. I like how these guys aren't saying anything or doing anything. They're just watching <laughs> me do this. So if you can imagine an uncircumcised penis, here is how it covers the end. Here's the head of the penis. This is the urethra, and it's flaccid. And there's a baculum, which is a hard bone in it. This is where it attaches. This is where the testes would be. So this is, this is an entire, I mean, you can even, it looks, I mean, it looks like a penis, you guys. Like a human penis. From what I've seen in textbooks. Whoo, that anus. You got a front row seat. I do. Oh, oh. For the show. <laughs> oh. Oh my God, that's bad. Whoo. Oh my God, I have to, I can't sit there. Oh, he's gonna you ready? ready? One, two, three. So we wanna invert all of the skin over his head like you're pulling a turtleneck from over your head. We're cutting really close to the skull. Now we're gonna get close to the eyes up there. So this is all cartilage right here. This is, um. The part of the skull where my finger is right now, I'm putting it into the skull. It's what you call the external auditory meatus. And that is where the cartilage of the ear connects with the skull. And that's uh, where you get the ear canal. And you want to cut around it so you can keep all of the ear intact with the hide. These are the masseter muscles, on the big cheek muscles on the side of the face. And this right here is the eye. You can, or where the eyelid would be on the inside, right there. Um, so you have the eyelid and the eyelashes and right here, is the um, zygomatic and squamosal bones, which make up like the ocular orbital. So you wanna cut really close so you can keep the eyelashes intact. And so then you can, when you get a little hole started, you can kind of poke it through and I can tell that I have the eyelids right there that are intact. We're gonna try and free part of the mouth. So you can start to feel like, I can feel the molars back there. I can feel the bottom of the mandible. Cutting along the teeth on the outside of the lips. Right now I'm kind of cutting into the bone a little bit because I'd rather get a couple marks in the bone than I would screwing up the side of the mouth. Everything is, there's like no muscle in here. It's all very thin and it's all very closely connected to the bone. And this is all the inside of his lip right here. So his lip is right here and this dark color is his gums. They're naturally dark and also because he's been bleeding on it. Okay, so we flipped him over. He's bleeding all over the table at this point. We're, we're really close to the end, you guys. And you can feel the nasal cavity here and then the, you have the cartilaginous snout, the nose in the front. So I just cut through that. Make sure I keep the lips intact. And this is a tricky one. You wanna get the bottom lip too. And there, we're free! We did it! We did it! That was the first time I ever skinned a wolf in my life and it might be the last time. And the pelt isn't gorgeous on the inside, but the outside of it doesn't look half bad. And then you gotta revert the head. So and got the we got we got the ears. Do we get the eyes? Eyes look good. The eyes look good. good. Got the eyelids. You get the eyelashes. You got the nose. And still has the a little bit of cartilage in there too. But it retains the good shape of the snout. And um, there you have it.
Thanks for watching, guys. It still has brains on it.